The Full Melt Show is intended for a mature audience. It contains adult themes, adult content, and sometimes adult language. Listener discretion is advised. The Full Melt. Marijuana on the ballot. Do you think it'll go there? And if so, what's the debate going to be like? Um, it probably will go there because I think we've, uh, you know, th this is something I think that a lot of legislators feel that this is something, okay, I, I either I feel this way about it or I don't. But you know what? I look better if I say, let the people decide. Kind of, well, we try that with road funding, but marijuana is a different issue. Um, but the, the opinion on, on uh, legalizing marijuana obviously is, you know, has, has vastly evolved. How would you vote on that today? Um, legalizing marijuana? Um, I don't know how I would vote. Whoa, really? I probably wouldn't make a decision until I stepped into the booth. I'd, I would vote uh, yes to legalize it because that would allow the, the police officers to focus on real drugs that can actually kill you and that you can become addicted to and that ruin lives. Also, uh, alcohol is legal for everyone over the age of 21 and it's a lot more powerful and destructive than marijuana Your is. Attorney and General everybody says, knows that. It's just that you can't pass a bill like that through the legislature because then someone can do a mailer against you saying, Representative mm -hmm. Smith voted to legalize drugs. Well, the Attorney General says not it is a alive. gateway drug that leads to other it's stuff. It's a gateway drug because it's illegal. So you, if you want to purchase marijuana, you have to deal with people who uh, are, are uh, operating uh, outside of the law. And, if, if, if you want, if you want to, you know, find out how to, you know, buy more harder drugs, you go, you go to them. You on board with that? On board with what? Uh, legalized marijuana. I have been in favor of legalizing marijuana since I was able to form opinions about things. Okay, you too. Absolutely, one hundred percent behind it. Well, why, why is there opposition? I mean, so not everybody agrees with Everyone you folks. Everyone is waiting and looking at each other saying, is it okay? Can we, can we just be right. all right with legal marijuana? Jake's right there. It's like gay marriage. There's just, I think there's a, a majority of, us, or, or at least half of uh, people on the right who just aren't, do they don't want to stick their foot out. Every, but everyone's, so many people have that same thought. It's like, is it okay? Can we just be for gay marriage now? Can we just be for marijuana legalization? But uh, if you're a politician, uh, it's safer just to wait and let the people decide. Right. I, I think you might actually see the legislature take a stand on that if, if the people in charge of the legislature see that it's going to bring out voters of, you know, bring out Democratic voters. And so if they want to, you know, not give incentive to young college students to come to the polls and, you know, while they're voting to legalize marijuana, oh, yeah, by the way, you know, click on some D candidates, then, uh, you know, I, I think there's going to be real calculus in the legislature. Well, we saw that this. with the minimum wage issue last year. They saw that a lot of Democrats would go to the polls, so they brokered the deal, which I found unpalatable, but it's there and it was better than it was. But they're not stupid. If they see that they can continue to suppress the vote, we know the Republicans love to do that. And if this is one of those issues, they'll find legislation that, that's palatable to everybody, and they might get something passed. Eric's right there. I, I think the, the marijuana argument would be, speaking of palatable, would be so much more palatable if you talk about it in the way that uh, Jake just did. Um, from more, if you, if you approach it from, from strictly from fiscal uh, responsibility sense of it and what are we spending our tax dollars on. I mean, to me, that, that's a definitely a valid argument, and that does make the legalization of marijuana yeah. no, palatable. It's not, it's not like uh, the people behind this, um, and they've got Republican and Democrat consultants working on this. They're not going to come out and say, marijuana is great, makes you a better person. It's good, it's good, it's good for your body and soul. They're going to say, look, this is silly. We've got real drug problems out there, and you know, alcohol is legal. And I don't remember, uh, I think they updated the statistics on the number of people who've overdosed on marijuana, and it's still zero. Right. That says something, doesn't it? Yes. Are you high? I'm what are you high. talking about? This is the Full Melt Show. Give me a break. The Full Melt Show. A marijuana discussion about news, culture, politics, and lifestyle. Fullmelt.com. Toll free. 844-420-TALK. 844-420-TALK. Standing tall in the PetPain.com studios live. Proudly holding our American flag. This is another edition of the Full Melt Show. I'll tell you, never ever put it past the great American consumer. That's right, capitalism is king here in the United States of America, and it always will be. 
you'll never stop the great force of capitalism. It's what we're founded on. It's the idea that any person can come to America with a great idea, work hard, get forward, and up themselves in life. I mean, that's the idea. The, the total polar opposite is obviously communism, where everybody gets to be the same, supposedly. It's a great ideal, and it's been proven over and over again. And American soldiers have spilt their blood on foreign soil for this right to exist, to persist here in this great continent of ours. And I just have to say that you're not going to stop capitalism ever for that reason. You're just never going to stop it. And capitalism rules. I mean, it's not just on the top of the, the social order, but it's on the top of the political order. So don't you be surprised for one moment, not one blinking eye second moment. No minutia shall you be surprised, not for an instant. When some capitalist comes forward and says, no, you're not going to prohibit this product in this country. Especially when it's never killed anybody. However, let it not be forgotten that since Harry Anslinger, uh, there has been a war on drugs in this country. The great war on drugs it will be known as in the future. Children of the future will open up their history books and look at the great war on drugs in America. It'll be right there in a big chapter. It'll start out someplace. I don't know. Where will it start out? It'll probably start out in the late 1800s, won't it? And then it'll, uh, it'll really take root in the 30s. And it'll be slammed home in the 70s, uh, bolstered up in the 80s, attacked in the 90s, and torn down in the teens. I mean, that's what it's going to be, isn't it, with marijuana? But don't you think for a second that those prohibitionists who are behind this message in the first place, the lies, the bolstering of bullshit about cannabis in America... Don't you think for a moment that they didn't have capitalist reasons behind that pro-business message? And it's, it's, it's going to be, remain the same in the, cha- in the face of changing America on this subject. It's not going to change. Uh, that key is still king. And as you look forward to this movement rolling across the country, whether you, whether you like it or not, whether you're for it or against it, it doesn't matter which side you're on. The tidal wave still cometh. And as it rolls forward, you have to pay attention to things like those same prohibitionists who are profiting off of the prohibitionist message. Remember, this was a monetary reason they had for saying no to cannabis in the country. Always has been. I've always said, follow the money on this subject. It will tell you the truth. The truth lies in the sunshine. It should be on your outdoor grow. It's not. Your grow's hidden indoors where you're going to pay an electric company a huge amount of money. Uh, They're going to get some money from this. Uh, Then the police are going to figure you out, and they're going to come and bust on you. They're going to get some money from this. The federal government might get involved. They're going to get some money from this. The courts are certainly going to get some money from that, aren't they? Uh, The local government's going to get some money from it. Um, They're going to take everything that they possibly can, even if they can't charge you with a drug crime. They're going to get something out of that for sure. Uh, Not only that industry built up around it, but then all the other industries. I'm just telling you, I'll remind you that companies like DuPont— the great DuPont dynasty would not be uh, creating things like rayon and nylon were it not for a natural product on the market. If there was a natural product on the market that compete in the fabrics and textiles industries, uh, you would not have a need, an incentive to create an artificial product that would take its place for strength, durability, washability, color fastness, uh, ease of wear, likability, availability. Look, you can only grow one, one season of cotton a year. Just one. Just you got one season of cotton, which is what the natural fiber product of choice is today, isn't it? One season you got. One harvest off that field. You grow hemp there. How many can you get? Down in the south, you can get like three. Tell me that's not an advantage. Tell me why the cotton producers and the people who make wooden paper pulp in this country wouldn't want to, to, to squash out marijuana, marijuana and hemp. As, as a natural resource for the textiles industry. 
uh, there's just, there just clearly is. So there's that industry that's profiting from it. There, there's a whole bunch of them, pharmaceuticals, petrochemical. A lot of companies have a reason to keep marijuana illegal. They're profiting off of this. And they're, you know, to their, to their I guess, I, I guess if you want to use that much money by imprisoning people, uh, you know, increasing the federal prison population from a mere 24,000 back in 1980 to 214,000 today. If you want to spend that kind of money on doing things like creating nylon and rayon, well, go right ahead. I would say that it is not well money invested. It's just not. And so there are some legal trickery abound in the changing face of the legality of marijuana, cannabis, hemp in this country. There's trickery afoot. Even while the prohibitionist message is swinging to a legalization or a decriminalization message. It's all right there in the black and white. And those people that you heard on the front of this program were from uh, Michigan Public Television's uh, Off the Record with Tim Skubik. Just got to give uh, uh, the people at Off the Record and WKAR uh, in uh, East Lansing. Fine, fine folks at uh, Univers- I'm sorry, Michigan State University put that program together. Um, talking about marijuana legalization in Michigan because there's pressure uh, from the activist community, the the people who passed the medical marijuana laws here in Michigan. There's pressure from them on the legislature to act now because some eight years later, after they've twisted and gutted this program in this state, minimalized it so severely, uh, to this day, uh, you know, news reports of uh, dispensary raids across the state. Still happening eight years later, so they're putting together a ballot petition. In fact, I'm collecting signatures for it. It's called MI Legalize, and that's pressuring these other guys who are the prohibitionists, remember? Some rich Republicans in Oakland County who've been making money off of this now want to make money off the profiteering end of legalization. And so there's some trickery afoot. The people in Ohio doing that uh, responsible Ohio thing. Legislature says, no, we don't want you doing that. There's some trickery afoot there. They've got some some legislation in place. Some other stuff going on at the federal level we have to examine today on the program. It's all about the federal government and the RICO laws. It's not just a criminal law, those RICO statutes, to keep the organized crime people down and in jail. There's also a civil end to that. And there's been a new angle by prohibitionists who want to quash out marijuana business by suing you under the RICO statute. You're damaging my business. Get your damn marijuana business away from my building. Or I'm going to take you to court for damages. That's what they're doing. Legal trickery afoot on marijuana business. That is the main focus on today's program. Don't you go away. We're examining it in full detail right here when we get the full melt next. You're getting the full melt. Got something to hide? Canalock offers discreet and effective storage solutions that destroy odor, so nobody knows. Canalock is a patented charcoal activated bag that discreetly stores your marijuana. Canalock is made from the same material as military chemical warfare suits. Get yours at canalock.com. Visit canalock.com to learn more about no smell technology. Hey, it's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint, because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan, is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Door Highway, or call 810-259-2571. The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810 259 571. Get growing with Gromax. Indoor, outdoor, beginner, or a warehouse full of Gavitas, probiotic organics, or huge production with Max Power Monster Aeroponics Systems. We can help you rock it. YouTube Gromax with two X's. Customer service is why we're blowing up. And I'm Dave. My cell number is 906 221 2111. We also specialize in electrical and HVAC and new double ended bulb technology. 906 221 2111. Get growing. Gromax. 
Get the beach bong ready for sunshine and sandy beaches in Negril, Jamaica this November as the High Tides Cannabis Cup moves from Amsterdam to the Caribbean. Your trip starts with the absolute best rates on airfare, hotel, events, and all your Cannabis Cup travel needs at TravelCannabisCup.com. Come stay with us, relax in the sun, play in the sand, and smoke down with the cool people, man. Get to the High Times Jamaica Cannabis Cup. Best travel prices right now at TravelCannabisCup.com. Hi, and welcome to Performance Bicycle. For over 30 years, people who love to ride have chosen Performance as their number one choice for all their cycling needs. Enjoy all your rides with Performance Bicycle, where great rides begin. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. I want to be bad with you, girl, like we're robbing and bad. If you're a, if you're one of those uh, marijuana growers, if you're a marijuana grower, I'm, and I'm talking to the legal crowd, I, I'm definitely speaking to the people who should have some authority, should have some protection, depending on your version of legal marijuana. If you're growing it for medical purposes, and that's really the only real reason you'd be growing it for legal purposes, unless you're in one of the states that allows it, and there's only a few. If you're one of those people, even if you're in one of those states uh, that does allow it legally for non-medical purposes. Uh, you better be aware. You better beware. You better, you know, look out and don't don't piss anybody off. You don't want to piss off the neighbors. I think a lot of med- marijuana businesses were very smart early on, and the ones that survive uh, the the treachery that happens after some of them decide to open, the scrutiny, the uh, examination, uh, the extraction of cash for you know things like licensing and all this stuff. It's very expensive to start a business of any kind. You get into the cannabis business, and we're talking super expensive. Everybody sees it as a cash cow. So, uh, you know, any place that's going to allow uh, licensing, uh, even if, like in Michigan, it's against the law for dispensaries in this state. Some cities have said, heck with that. Um, we need to support this. Uh, there are cannabis patients that need access to this. And uh, despite the fact that there's no carve out in the law for it, we're just going to tolerate them because and the way we're going to do this is we're going to regulate it. We're going to say, despite the you know, ill effects of the state law with regards to its illegality, we're going to carve out some space for these medical marijuana dispensaries. And uh, but they get raided. They get shut down. They get their stuff taken. They don't even get charged many times. They just take all their crap. Start over again. Go ahead and reinvest. Start that business from scratch, Mr. Entrepreneur. Mr. American Businessman. Mr. Capitalist. Start all over again. Look, it's just greed and corruption because if if, if it wasn't, they'd let this person exist, this company exist, this entity exist in a space where they wouldn't come and steal from them. It's their way of saying, okay, well, this is how we've settled on this, but this just gives us a great reason to suck your blood. To completely deflate you of any cash possibility whatsoever. And if you survive that gauntlet, get ready for the IRS because there was just a court ruling that says uh, in federal district court uh, that it doesn't matter that your dispensary is a legal dispensary, even if you're operating inside of Colorado or Alaska or Washington or Oregon or D.C., doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we're still going to take 90% of your uh, process uh, profits. And we're going to take 90% of the profits before you had to pay out things like expenses. You know those lights? You know that uh, business tax? Uh, you know the uh, expensive uh, uh, licensing? All those employees you had to pay? All that processing? The overhead on goods? Buying things wholesale and reselling them retail? You've gone through all that. You've put your neck at risk from a legal standpoint. You've survived the gauntlet, and now comes the tax man. I want to play a Beatles song now. And we're going to take 90% of whatever you made from the top, not after you deduct your business expenses, because the Court of Appeals said, uh, that what is it, 1001E? I don't remember what stupid uh, IRS code it exists under. But it's one that says we're going to take your profits. If you're an illegal business, you still got to file a tax Return, Mr. Illegal, Mr. Illegal Businessman. And when you do and we find out and we connect your, uh, t- your profits, any income that you might have to any kind of illicit drug activity, we are going to take 90%, any kind of illegal activity whatsoever for that matter. 
they're ill-gotten gains and we're going to take 90%. And you can't deduct anything from that figure. You can't deduct any business expenses like you could. The rent, the gas, all that stuff. Overhead of any kind. So it might cost you to be in business as a marijuana businessman. IRS says so. Federal government's got the RICO statutes, and I'll just uh, read you the story because it's an amazing one, and you got to pay attention to this because I would be, after seeing this ruling today, uh, as reported by, is this the Associated Press? No, it's U.S. News and World Report. It is an uh, AP story. Out of Denver, Dateline, Denver, a federal crafted fight. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, let me try this again. A federal law crafted to fight the mob is giving marijuana opponents a new strategy in their battle to stop the expanding industry. Racketeering lawsuits. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Line up and sue each other. A Colorado pot shop recently closed after a Washington-based group opposed to illegal marijuana uh, business sued not just the pot shop, but a laundry list of firms doing business with it. From its landlord and accountant to the Iowa bonding company guaranteeing its tax payments. One by one, many of the plaintiffs agreed to stop doing business with the medical marijuana of the Rockies company until that mountain shop closed its doors and had to sell off its pot at fire sale prices. (laughs) With another lawsuit pending in southern Colorado, the cases represent a new approach to fighting marijuana. If the federal government won't stop its expansion, pot opponents say federal racketeering lawsuits could. Marijuana may be under legal state law, uh, legal under state law, but federal drug law still considers any marijuana business organized crime. It is still illegal to cultivate, sell, possess marijuana under federal law, said Brian Barnes, lawyer for Safe Streets Alliance, a Washington based anti crime group that brought the lawsuits on behalf of neighbors of the two Colorado pot businesses. Uh, Lawyers on both sides say the Colorado racketeering approach is novel. If our legal theory works, basically what it will mean is that folks who are participating in the marijuana industry in any capacity, I'll repeat, in any capacity, are exposing themselves to petty significant liability. Uh, And I have to, uh, that is a quote. Uh, It wasn't petty. It was pretty. So uh, I'll repeat. If our legal theory works, basically what it means is that folks who are participating in the marijuana industry in any capacity are exposing themselves to pretty significant liability, Barnes said. The 1970 Racketeer Influenced and, uh, and Corrupt Organizations Act, or otherwise known as the RICO statute, sets up federal criminal penalties for activity that begins to benefit a criminal enterprise. The RICO Act also provides for civil lawsuits by people hurt by such racketeering. In this case, neighbors of the two businesses who claim the pot businesses could hurt their property values. Whoa! Does that work on the other other side of things? Does does some of these properties that values go up because of the neighboring pot businesses? Uh, could you sue them for a piece of the par- part of the money that they got to increase in their landlord holdings by the fact that your property increased? No, I don't think they do. It doesn't work the other way around, does it? So, if successful, civil lawsuits under RICO acts trigger the triple penalties. So, in other words, uh, say, for example, you could only get a penalty of this kind of uh, uh, $100 before. Now it's trouble damages. So, you get $300 for every 100 If your actual damages are 100 now you're going to get three. Uh, Filed in February, the Colorado lawsuits have yet to go before a judge, but one has already had the intended effect, hasn't it? That's what you do. You sue them until they shut the hell down. In April, three months after the RICO lawsuit was filed, medical marijuana of the Rockies closed. Owner Jerry Olson liquidated his inventory by selling marijuana for $120 an ounce, far below average retail prices. I'm being buried in legal procedure, Olson wrote on a fundraising webpage he created to fight the lawsuit. The effort so far has brought in just a paltry $674. The closure came after the pot shop's bank, Bank of the West, closed the shop's account and was dismissed as a plaintiff in the suit. Its policy is never to offer accounts to recreational marijuana businesses, the court uh, court order said. And just last week, a bonding company in Des Moines, Iowa, 
paid 50 grand to get out of the lawsuit. We're out of the business of bonding marijuana businesses in Colorado and elsewhere, and elsewhere, countrywide, until this is settled politically, said Therese Whalage, spokeswoman for the Merchants Bonding Company Mutual. Uh, the case of the Mountain Pot Shop shows that racketeering lawsuits can have an effect on the industry of marijuana, even if the lawsuits never make it to a hearing. This lawsuit is meant more to have a chilling effect on others than it is to benefit the plaintiffs, said Adam Wolf, Olson's lawyer. In the Colorado lawsuit against a dispensary called Alternative Holistic Healing, the pot shop isn't even going down so easily. The shop owners are building a 50,000-square-foot warehouse in southern Colorado for growing pot. I'm sorry, that's a 5,000-square-foot warehouse for growing pot. 50,000 is a lot more. <laughs> Uh, despite being sued by neighboring property owners for affecting their mountain views. They're suing them for the mountain view. A construction company and insurance companies working with alternative holistic healing haven't abandoned the job. It's a frivolous lawsuit, said the pot shop's lawyer, Michael Buck. I'm sorry, Matthew Buck, I can't read today. <laughs> it has not affected the pot shop owners whatsoever. Um, I would suggest that if you're teetering on the brink of bankruptcy in, in starting a new business, remember, these guys are only a year old or less. Unless you're a medical marijuana business, and then you've been fighting that thing to get to the retail place in Colorado. So there's one bit of trickery, isn't it? And that applies nationwide. It's the federal civil RICO statutes. Let your neighbors sue you in federal court. Going to make a federal case out of my pot shop neighbor blocking my mountain view. I can't see the elk and I can't see. No, I want to see those uh, those mountain uh, mountain tail deer. Well, they're a little different than the deer we got around here. Uh, I saw him walking through the neighborhoods one day. I was like, is that is that something in somebody's yard? Is that just like a it looked like a target because it was sitting still when I was rolling past it in the car out there in Denver in what, 2013? <laughs> Rolling through the mountains, kind of checking things out in the neighborhoods, and there's this deer in the yard. I'm like, is that a deer? It doesn't look real. It looks like a target. And then it proceeded to look up at us. I'm like, stop. I'm going to take a picture of that. And I took, I got out of the car, and the thing was like, boom, gone. <laughs> Him and his friend, who I couldn't see, he was hiding in the background. They're camouflaged in the winter. Actually, it was spring, but it, it might as well still be winter in Colorado in April. So uh, that's one angle, the federal suits. Now, uh, it's a new angle, mind you, but I would say, I would argue, I would pose it that this is new and increased pressure on legislature to answer this. Whether it's the state legislature or whether it's the federal legislature, whether it's the halls of Congress <clears throat> or the halls of your state capitol. Um. And it needs to be the halls of Congress, doesn't it? Because they're the ones that have omnipotent control over this issue, federal banking. Because everybody, even your local credit unions, uh, participate in the federal banking system. They do. They got to get the money from somewhere. And they got to be able to transfer money. Can't pay your car note or your mortgage note or other student loans or anything else through your bank, through your checking account. It's not hooked up to the federal system. You are using federal currency, aren't you? Those are U.S. notes. Backed by the Federal Reserve. They're Federal Reserve notes. It's the same currency. So there's that. Now, then there's this trickery angle that uh, Responsible Ohio's got going on by the legislature there. They're like, we don't like this idea. And I, I'm with them on this. But it's still a tricky thing to do, isn't it? To go back after a, an organization has spent an, a bunch of money in their defense. And I am not on responsible Ohio side. I'll reveal. I think it's pretty clear. But in their defense, playing devil's advocate, if I was responsible Ohio, I'd be pissed off that my legislature just revoked all the money that I spent on getting this campaign to where it's at. All my investors are pissed off. We're all having board meetings, trying to figure out what we're going to do now because we had this in the bag. Legislature goes and does this. No, you can't do that. They devised a strategy to derail the effort. Same thing going on in Michigan now. In Michigan, uh, for several years since that passage of the Medical Marijuana Act in 08, some eight years later, nearly there, 
Uh, the people have picked up and done MI legalize and said, nope, we're going to take this away from you guys. Uh, we're going to take all penalties and criminal, criminal acts away, uh, impose the most of a $100 civil infraction. If you break any marijuana laws, that's all you get. Still got to pay by, if you play by the rules, though, you can have 12 plants as an adult. Can't transfer it to a kid. That's the only thing you can go to jail for. Everything else, have at it. There's dispensaries. There's a place you got to, you get, you, there's a, there's a system in place. There's taxation. It's well regulated. It's a different version of the Colorado thing, but the Michigan legislators don't like that. And so they, we've been trying in the medical marijuana community to modify that medical marijuana act. And we could kicked it around and kicked it around and couldn't figure out a way that they couldn't screw us on it still. And so we did this. Started all over again from scratch. Wiped the slate clean. Got out new petition drive forms. Got it approved to the legislature. Organized, raised money, and got out there in the streets and started collecting signatures. Now, big business is hijacking those bills that we sent up to the legislature. We were giving those guys money. Those legislators in this state giving them lots of money, holding fundraisers left and right, handing that money to them in a check, contributing to that pack, contributing to that reelection effort. For the next term, be here for the next term, help us out for the next term. They never found a way to get this done and in fact came to lobbying by other peer pressure, by other pressure from other parts of the government, not from the people that they oversee at all. And now big business is hijacking those bills, completely gutting them for what they were intended to be, which was a response to the no dispensaries issue and the no concentrates issue in Michigan law that settled out of that medical marijuana act. And they're going in there saying, look, you know what? Um, we're going to pad, we're going to pad the, uh, our success here. We're going to stack the deck a bit. So, Hey, lawmakers, doesn't this make sense? Rather than us going and doing a competing petition drive and spending all that money there uh, to compete against MI legalized. And what if they vote them both in? I mean, what do you do then? Instead of, you know, drudging up all that legal gray area, why don't we just take that money and spend it on giving it to you and your campaigns to get elected yet again? But we need you to change those bills. We need you to change them to our benefit. Not those other guys. Not those guys with the MI legalized people. Not those medical marijuana people. None of those guys. We want you to craft it for business's benefit. The same businesses that hold, hold the idea that prohibition is a good thing because we get to make money from that. It's coming from all angles, people. The marijuana drama, the soap opera, is continuing. But it's also inevitable that marijuana will be legal in this country in most places. The question is, who's going to make the money? And I think, based on this last entire part of the program preceding my voice now, that's been well answered. More coming up. You're getting the full melt. Introducing Sacred Elements, a place for natural and alternative healing for the mind, body, and soul. Sacred Elements. It's one place, all solutions. Alkaline water, herbal remedy, essential oil. Sacred Elements. Natural and organic shampoo, lotion, pain cream, bath salt. Sacred Elements. Beeswax candles and handmade crafts, canes and walking sticks, artwork, jewelry, and repurposed goods. Sacred Elements. Next to this weekly, 400 South Door Highway, Flint. 11 to 7 daily, closed Sunday. Call 810-259-2570. If you you're like us, your pets aren't just animals, they're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? <laughs> Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, the allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart. And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. Visit PetPain.com or ask for Pet Pain at your local pet store. PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pet. You know, it's not easy out there. But it can be easier. 
And when it comes to medical marijuana in Michigan and chronic pain management, Dr. Bob Townsend, renowned for his patient advocacy and deep understanding of how patients and medical marijuana certifications fit together, makes it his hallmark to educate and provide the best holistic treatment for your condition. His knowledgeable staff makes you feel warm and welcome, and Dr. Bob makes you feel well. With locations across the state in Cadillac and Gaylord, Kalamazoo, Marquette, Mount Pleasant, Muskegon, Saginaw, Traverse City, you can't beat the convenience and feeling you get knowing you have someone on your side that cares. Denali Healthcare is on the web at DenaliHealthCareMI.com. Get answers to your holistic health questions or schedule an appointment now by calling 989-339-4464. Chronic pain management and holistic health answers is what they do. It's all they do. DenaliHealthCareMI.com. Get your certification and peace of mind now by making an appointment with Dr. Bob Townsend at 989-339-4464. Get the beach bong ready for sunshine and sandy beaches in McGrill, Jamaica this November as the High Times Cannabis Cup moves from Amsterdam to the Caribbean. Your trip starts with the absolute best rates on airfare, hotel, events, and all your Cannabis Cup travel needs at TravelCannabisCup.com. Come stay with us, relax in the sun, play in the sand, and smoke down with a cool people, man. Get to the High Times Jamaica Cannabis Cup. Best travel prices right now at TravelCannabisCup.com. Get growing with Gromax. Indoor, outdoor, beginner, or a warehouse full of Gavitas, probiotic organics, or huge production with Max Power Monster Aeroponics Systems. We can help you rock it. YouTube Gromax with two X's. Customer services why we're blowing up. And I'm Dave. My cell number is 906 221 2111. We also specialize in electrical and HVAC and new double ended bulb technology. 906 221 2111. Get growing. Gromax. Hey, this is Tommy Chong, and you're listening to The Full Melt Show. It's The Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. Hey, just as a program note reminder, Tuesday, that's tomorrow, Chris Kerrigan. He is the California Water Enforcement Division spokesperson. He's going to give us an update on the idea that uh, the drought is being impacted further on water supply availability in California because of the diversion of water. The diversion to marijuana grows across the state. Apparently, there's a huge impact, and we'll get the full melt from him tomorrow on the program. Uh, also, what else have we got going on? Another program note. Uh, should we do this today? I think we should do it today. I got a report uh, from one of our sponsors. By the way, Cantalock.com uh, sponsors our phone lines. Uh, they are the Cantalock.com No Smell Bags phone lines. Uh, for both our celebrity guests and also for um, callers. So if you want to call the phone lines and, and, and comment on any, any topic we've got on the program, any uh, guest we've got on the program, you're always welcome to do that. It's a toll-free number that Canalog provides to you. It's 844-420-TALK. That's 844-420-8255. That's the uh, actual numbers. Uh, and you'll reach me here in the studio from 7 until 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. To get on the Full Melt, which is at thefullmelt.com. And if you go to that webpage, I hope you're hoping you're probably there now, unless you're some, there's a couple other places where you can hear us for sure. Uh, go to thefullmelt.com right there on the top of the page is an iTunes link. And uh, you, you can subscribe to the program by just clicking on that link. It'll go right into your iTunes folder every day in case you can't listen live all the time. Uh, handy and convenient. If you're a dispensary owner, I would suggest that that is a great way to record this program and play it back for your people so that they can be abreast and aware of all the goings on in the cannabis community across the great USA. Uh, now, I got to talk about this. Um, I'm going to play you this today because uh, this is important. It's an overall uh, part of the Obama administration, the Justice Department's scheme to reduce the prison population. This today from them. I'm playing this uh, from their website. Uh, from yeah, I think it's uh, the Obama Facebook. Years, a lot of people have aware oh, of the what happened? Oh, I plugged. To... Hang on, hang on. It's not plugged in. Hold on. I had it plugged in for power. I did not have it plugged in for audio. Bear with me again. Oh, I charged this up. This worked in rehearsal, folks. I'm just telling you, there was no rehearsal. Um, here we go. Over the last few years, a lot of people have become aware of the inequities in the criminal justice system. The fact that we spend over $80 billion a year in incarcerating people, oftentimes who've only been engaged in nonviolent drug offenses. That's one of the reasons why I'm commuting the sentences of 46 prisoners who were convicted many years 
or in some cases decades ago. These men and women were not hardened criminals, but the overwhelming majority had been sentenced to at least 20 years. 14 of them had been sentenced to life for nonviolent drug offenses. So their punishments didn't fit the crime. And if they'd been sentenced under today's laws, nearly all of them would have already served their time. I've made clear to them that re-entering society is going to require responsibility on their part and hard work and smarter choices. But I believe that at its heart, America is a nation of second chances. And I believe these folks deserve their second chance. So that's uh, that's uh, what came from the Obama administration's uh, Facebook page today, this announcement. And it was followed up by uh, multiple news stories. It'll probably be on the evening news if it already hasn't been. Uh, this thing about the Obama administration. Now, let me put this story on pause for a minute because I didn't uh, finish up an earlier thought, the program note, the catalog thing. Uh, I forgot to close up that thought. Sorry. Um, I heard over the weekend uh, that somebody gave me a report about the catalog no smell bags. Uh, she has an excellent report um, about international travel and the use of that bag. Uh, we'll talk to her in the last segment of the, segment of the program. Back to the story about the president uh, making this announcement today. Because I think it's not only a major announcement, it's an important one. Um, it is the beginning of what was reported earlier in this month. I think July 3rd, a story came out. Uh, Washington Post, something like that. Uh, one of the big rags, the national rags, uh, reported a story saying that, hey, uh, the administration is, uh, we've got some inside word. Uh, get ready. The administration is going to start releasing in the next few weeks. It's quoted, I think, is a few weeks from now, which is back at the beginning of the month. On the order of possibly hundreds of federal prisoners. I can tell you that the list of 46 today, I've seen the list. And it is comprised mostly of nonviolent crack cocaine, cocaine-based dealers. Uh, there were some exceptions, but most of them, even the exceptions, all had cocaine in them. Uh, there were two marijuana uh, 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 people in prison, uh, uh, life sentences for these people. Uh, remember, this is, an, an, you know, life sentence is about, it's like 20, I think it equates to 20 years. Um, li life without parole is uh, kind of like natural life. Uh, you're going to be there until you die. We're not letting you out. Uh, these guys all had life in prison, um, which I think if you equate it out, if you measure it, they, they count it as like 20 years. If I'm not mistaken, again, if I am mistaken, and you're a legal mind that is brighter than mine, and I'm not a legal mind, I am definitely not a legal mind. I have a legal mind, but I have no formal training. So I can't be a, an, official, a, a, you know, an official on this subject. I am no authority in the legal arena. I can only report to you what I know as a reporter, what I've read myself from legal documents. That I can do. Uh, these people uh, that were let go today among them, let me see if I can look them up real quick, uh, because there's 46 of them. But I reported earlier to somebody on Facebook about who these people were uh, because I did look to see if there were any marijuana only uh, people in there, and, and there clearly were. Um, and there was one guy from Detroit, Detroit, Michigan, uh, just for you know the locals. I think I was posting it to a local page. That's why I had brought up the Detroit issue, uh, because the guy uh, was uh, put in life in prison again uh, for you know, I think it was a con conspiracy to um, and or actual delivery of controlled substances, trafficking. In controlled substances. It just says controlled substances. That kind of bothers me because it doesn't point to which ones or one. Because it says plural. Uh, the cat from Detroit. Um, let me just see if I can uh, pull up the particular story here or the, or the particular comment. Do, 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 do. Oh, by the way, uh, rapper 50 Cent. He ain't got 50 Cent no more. He uh, apparently today filed bankruptcy. Only like $155 million uh, in 2015, but somehow he is bankrupt. Uh, we'll talk about that story probably in an upcoming program. I'm still looking for this uh, reference. Uh, Ohio, no. Rand Paul, no. Uh, the crazy fast food place. I, I really want to talk about that before we get off if I can, because that's just crazy. 
Uh, Senator Warren pushing for banking things. No, it's not that one. I'm not finding it. Where the heck did it go? Oh, that's driving me nuts. I I think I posted this uh, story. Yeah, there it is. Okay, I think I got it now. Finally, good lord. Uh, so here we go. Uh, I said uh, in in a in a post uh, comment to my own post, uh, there were only two of the forty six that were there for marijuana offenses. Jerome Wayne Johnson of Fort White, Florida. His offense was cultivation of marijuana plants in the Middle District of Florida. That was the first charge. The first, uh, the second charge was conspiracy to manufacture, distribute, and possess with intent to distribute uh, more than one thousand marijuana plants. That's in the Northern District of Florida. He got a sentence of sixty months. Uh, with uh, five years supervised release. And that sentence began in 2003. Today, it was commuted to end on November 10th. Um, incidentally, all of the people that were let go by the Obama administration today under these uh, drug charges, uh, all the sentences that were commuted, they weren't pardons. He didn't say it's okay, you, do, you, you know, uh, we're going to pretend like this didn't happen. He didn't do that. He didn't negate their charge. He didn't pardon them. It wasn't an okay, a pass. Uh, This was saying, look, your sentence has been served. Before there were ugly, harsh laws that, you know, aren't only, you know, really based on human cause. They're not. Uh, They're based on retribution. They're based on angry feeling. They're based on knee-jerk reaction. It's horrible public policy that is unsustainable. And obviously, uh, on the release of these prisoners, the federal government has made realization of this point. Uh, but there, so these people are all being them let go on November 10th. None of them are being let go right now. Your sentence ends on November 10th to all 46 of these people. In one case, I read, because I read all of them, uh, that the, uh, I think the, the penalty, the fees, there's some kind of fees or fines, might have been some restitution. I don't know. They, they just said penalties of $4,000. Uh, somehow they had to pay a fine or some kind of money of $4,000. Whatever they hadn't paid has been, re- you know, Dismissed. They're not going to expect the rest of that payment. So they come out on November 10th, and you don't have to pay the rest of that money to that person. And that was another one of these cocaine or methamphetamine charges. Most I get all of these charges except for these two. The only ones that didn't have cocaine attached were these two marijuana charges. There were a couple of other marijuana charges mixed up in some of the other cocaine ones. But these were the only two that didn't have coke attached. Um, and then uh, John M. Wyatt from La Cruces, New Mexico, Uh, His offense was possession with intent to distribute marijuana, Southern District of Illinois. Uh, Sentenced to 262 months in prison, eight years supervised release, $500 fine. Uh, His sentence was commuted again to November 10th. It was his sentence will end now on November 10th. Um, His sentence began in August of 2004. I can tell you that there are some 30,000 people that are eligible for release under this program, as outlined by the Obama administration through the Justice Department. They've made a wide request for, because you can't just, he doesn't just pick you out of the crowd and say, you're, 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 you know, you get to get out now after this date. He doesn't do that. You have to apply. <clears throat> you have to have somebody on the outside who's smart enough to, to pull these strings and, and get the paperwork done and understand how to fill out the paperwork because there's a lot of it. I know there's a law firm um, in Cleveland working to get somebody out of prison for one of these very kinds of offenses, a crack cocaine-related offense. person's got life in prison. I mean, they threw away the key on them. It would have been probably equated to about 20 years, and I'm sure there would have been a parole hearing, and he probably would have been out at that time. I have been there since, uh, again, like 2003, 2004. He's been there for like 10 years. And those are the people that the president is letting out. Um, I can tell you after talking to that attorney that is tasked with filling out this clemency petition, because that's what it starts out as, as a clemency petition, but he ends up commuting the sentence if that's what his you know, decision is. Uh, commutation is uh, the uh, execution of a clemency request. It's clemency. It's not a pardon request. I'm not saying excuse me. I, I didn't do, you know... I really shouldn't have been here, and it's not a pardon. It's not an okay. It's not a pass. It's not a thing saying you're innocent. It's none of that. It's a commutation. Your sentence is done. Enough already. We're letting you out. We're overcrowded by our own doing. And shame on us for doing it. But don't you go out there and start muddling again, because you're going to end up back here. And that's the bigger question that's begged, isn't it? 
Are these people going to go reoffend? I'd say that many of them can and probably will because they're not necessarily going to be equipped with the uh, skills uh, to be back out on the street and make it on their own without resorting to illicit affair. My opinion. Uh, 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 and that's only because the government is not focused in that place. In this country, we say we put you in prison and throw away the key. We don't rehabilitate in the corrections system, which is, you know, alluding to rehabilitation. Uh, let's face it. Most of these people are going to be back out in the public. Would you rather them be employable and contribute to society? Or would you rather take their ability to be gainfully employed away and force them into a life of crime, which is going to make them have a large recidiv- recidivism rate? So, yeah. Boy, that's a rough word to say sometimes. Recidiv- recidivism. Oh, good Lord. See what I started? So, um... I, I think that it's important to, to pay attention to this because I think there's another wave to come, and I think it's going to be larger. The reason that this has only amounted to about 88 or 89 people so far, uh, which is a lot of people to be uh, participating in this program for the president to just let go midterm, mid-second term. I think a lot more are going to come uh, again in November. Um, in fact, the person that I was telling you about in Cleveland his petition is being filled out now because it's a long, after talking to that attorney, long process that they got to learn. They have to watch videos and be instructed on how to fill out this clemency petition. Uh, and the reason that private attorneys are doing this pro bono is because the Justice Department angrily imposed some edict saying that, uh, look, um, you we're not, you're, actually it was Congress. I think Congress got pissed off and said, you, the Justice Department, you can't be spending any money uh, on uh, new attorneys of filling out these clemency petitions. We're not going to waste any federal tax dollars on those clemency petitions. Find some private Joe to do it. And that's what they did. They sent it out and they made this big request. Um, it's been a slow, arduous process. That guy's been getting his clemency petition done for a long time, I know. Months and months this has been going on. Um, most of it in the learning sector for the attorneys filling out the petition, interviewing people that they knew, interviewing family, finding out who's in contact with them, what kind of su- social support do they have. Making sure that uh, doing the background stuff and making sure that there's no violence, no gangs involved in these affairs. Making sure that they qualify for the clemency design. And now that a lot of these people that I think are in that same place that this person in Cleveland is, I think there's a whole wave of them, possibly in the thousands. And I think the president will sign most, if not all, of those clemency petitions when they reach his desk. The question is, how many will reach his desk? And the answer to that question is, how many lawyers can we find to do it? There's 30,000 of these people that are eligible eligible in the system right now. When we come back, i got to do uh, this report. I'm going to call her by surprise. We'll see if she's available. I did not plan this. I, this was an afterthought. On Friday, this segment of the program will be the Butters Update when we get to Friday. Right now, it is going to be the Canalock update uh, about how well or not well the Canalock bags performed with cannabis on an overseas flight. We'll talk to Liz Clemens next. You're getting the full melt. Got something to hide? Canalock offers discreet and effective storage solutions that destroy odor, so nobody knows. Canalock is a patented charcoal activated bag that discreetly stores your marijuana. Canalock is made from the same material as military chemical warfare suits. Get yours at canalock.com. Visit canalock.com to learn more about no smell technology. Imagine a world where patients can use marijuana like any other medicine. The Marijuana Patients Organization challenges the status quo by helping our neighbors to enjoy a better quality of life. Visit the MPO at MarijuanaPatients.org and enjoy informative articles, engaging debates, and information about treatments, doctors, and dispensaries in your area. Over 50,000 people have registered at MarijuanaPatients.org since 2010. 
Join us at the Marijuana Patients Organization today, marijuanapatients.org. Hey, it's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint, because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan, is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Door Highway, or call 810 259 925 The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810-259-2571. If you're like us, your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, the allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart. And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. Visit PetPain.com or ask for Pet Pain at your local pet store. PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pet. Introducing Sacred Elements, a place for natural and alternative healing for the mind, body, and soul. Sacred Elements. It's one place. All solutions. Registered, licensed, certified, ordained. Sacred Elements. Massage, hypnosis, Reiki. Sacred Elements. Raindrop, aroma and color therapy. Body detox. Ministry, life coaching, weight and nutrition counseling. Sacred Elements. Next to the Sweet Leaf, 400 South Door Highway, Flynn. 11 to 7 daily, closed Sunday. Call 810-259-2570. It's the full melt. Radio show. Radio show. So I'm going to call up Liz here and get the story. Here we go. See if we can get around the show here. So here's what's going on. Uh, during the break, I called her from the other line, uh, from the uh, from the guest line. We have to wait for the music to quit now. Hello? Hang on, Liz. There's some music. Wait for the music to quit. Hang on. Okay. Get up with the bumper music. It's forever long here. I don't know. Who makes the bumper music around? Bob, can you mock? stop making the bumper music so damn long? Can you shorten up the bumper music? What? what? There's no Bob. I was just... So, uh, Liz. Yes. Um, hi. I wanted to talk to you about your recent trip to Europe. It was a lovely trip, was it not? Oh, fabulous trip. Fabulous. Now, uh, you're one of these people that uh, obtained a Cantalock no-smell bag. Am I correct? Absolutely. Now, now, have you used a bag much? Does it come in useful, and what do you use it for? Uh, I, you know, use it to transport. Yes, when I travel. So, yes. now, uh, you found that, 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 that no, you can't smell anything out of that bag? No, you cannot smell anything out of that bag. So, um, and you went to Europe, and you, and you took the bag with you? Did that work for you? It worked fabulous. Fabulous. I was I was in Europe, two different countries, going through security like crazy. Um, what from Germany to Poland to Italy, Italy back to Poland, Poland back to Dulles Airport in D.C., and um, all kinds of high security coming back into the United States. Every every trip was coming into Dulles. There was hundreds of people in security at uh, customs in uh, D.C. And um, everyone had to go through, I don't know how many screenings in Frankfurt, Germany. Um, even you, though you hadn't left the airport, hadn't left the secured area, double security. Even before you could board the plane, they were giving you a stamp so they would know that you were talking to security before you were allowed a boarding pass in Frankfurt, Germany, to return back to the United States. That's how heavy security is. So after going from country to country, getting stamped here and there, and going through security checkpoint after security checkpoint, did they ever check you, uh, catch you smuggling the energy drink? Because- no. <laughs> Never. You, you, did, you, weren't, no. you weren't smuggling energy drink, were you? <laughs> no, 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 no. I was, you know, I was, you know, enjoying I- my medical, you know, my medical meds. 
Yeah, but, no, I get, no, I get you. I was telling a joke because it seems like in order to go all those places in in Europe, you had to have some energy drink with you. I'm just saying. Yeah, right. Uh huh. No, my energy is right up there without any help. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, so the, the cantaloupe bag was uh, sealed tight. I mean, it was good to go. Absolutely fabulous. Absolutely so you, fabulous. you brought your supplies. The last time I was in Europe, I had, you know, I always, in fact, all four times now that I've been in Europe, I always had my meds. Always. But and that's, we're talking 41 years ago. We're talking when my father passed away in 07, you know, um, London in 85. Um, but but only recent oh, wait only recently though did you because tri- I'm sure you had to discreet it in other ways on those trips only recently were you able to use the cantaloupe bag right absolutely yes and so I mean yeah. were the, the other ways were they messy did you have to you know hide it in stuff I mean it had to well, be some yeah I would always crotch it oh no I don't want to we don't want to know about that <laughs> <laughs> well that's how I would do it before before security and before those X-ray machines that they have now I was always crotch. So, yeah. now, so now you're crotch-free with the cantaloupe bag. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> I like it, too. It's more comfortable, believe you me. <laughs> Liz, thanks for your report today. Okay. We'll talk awesome. to you soon. We got more coming up all week long. You got to tune into the show at thefullmelt.com, where we give you all the news, and I mean all the news, that we can pack into one hour. Daily, Monday through Friday, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on thefullmelt.com. Or you can find us on iTunes and YouTube. We'll see you tomorrow. The Full Melt Show is a production of TFM Media.